Hey, comic book fans, Blue Goblin here with my latest comic book review blog for the week of the 5th of August 2009. Now, this is a special video here. I'm going to review some comic books that came out, and then I'm going to talk, of, we're going to go off the subject here and give some thoughts about Blackest Night. So, let's get started with the reviews. We're going to start with Ultimatum X Men Requiem One Shot. Uh, I thought this was okay. This was certainly. Miles ahead of uh, Jeff Loeb's uh, main story, but really, it's not really saying much. This this story was basically Gene and what was left of the X Men just burying the dead members of the X Men, and that was that was pretty much it. Um, it's not a ba it wasn't a badly told story, you know. I, I love the stuff with Kitty in the beginning of the book, but that was probably the best part of it. Um, definitely say you don't really need this unless you're a hardcore fan of the Ultimate X Men. Otherwise, you might not need this. It's just that's just not the way I pictured Ultimate X Men going out. It's not really going out with a bang. Next up, Ultimate Ultimatum Fantastic Four Requiem one shot. This was a little bit better than the X Men one, although it's really predictable. I mean, just look at the cover. I'll go ahead and spoil it. The Fantastic Four break up. Big whoop. I mean, I, who didn't see it coming? If you if you were a collector of Ultimate Fantastic Four like I was. And if you saw how Reed Richards behaved in the uh, in the last few issues, then then you could totally call a, a separation. The last page is kind of sad, but it's also a nicely written story. But all in all, unless I would only recommend it for hardcore uh, Fantastic Four fans. That was probably that's probably be it. Next up, Captain America Reborn number two. Oh boy, I'm I'm half and half with this. Ed Brubaker, um, he does a good job writing a good story, yet it's completely unoriginal. I, I it's just way too soon for Steve Rogers to come back to life when his death was such an iconic moment. I'm not going to stress that enough. Now, I, I think Marvel's only doing this for two reasons. One, they it seems as if they are literally copying DC's idea with Batman Reborn. Think about it. First sidekick now becomes the hero, yet the predecessor stuck in time. Both plots are the exact same thing. Bruce Wayne stuck in the past. Steve Rogers is stuck in the past. Think about it. And the other reason why they're doing this is because they want to cash in on the upcoming Captain America movie. Because God forbid that they have a Steve Rogers movie without a Steve Rogers in the comic books. That's really sad, Marvel. That's really sad. It's not really necessary. We're not as dumb as you think we are. I mean, come on. Now, DC can pull it off with Barry Allen. But really, this uh, it's a nicely written story. It's just, again, it's just the plot. The plot is just really off. It's not original at all, but it's it's nice. It's a nice written story. It's just I just don't like the plot. Next up, oh yeah, Deadpool Merc with the Mouth number two. I love that cover. That cover is awesome. Da 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 da. -da. <laughs> yeah, it's a Jaws parody. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Gisler and Dazo. Uh, this team pulls together a solid, hilarious as shit book. <laughs> this was even funnier than some of Daniel Way's stuff. This is how Deadpool books should be written. Very nicely done, Marvel. Giving you thumbs up for this. This was good. This was really, really, really good. I'm not going to spoil anything. It's good. I definitely recommend you pick that book up. Uh, this is probably the one you've all been waiting for, right? Yep. Amazing Spider-Man 601. First off, I want to give a shout out to uh, to Dan Slot. Dan Slot has subscribed to my videos, and I want to say, Dan, I'm truly honored, and I loved your stuff in Amazing 600. However, can't say the same thing about this book. I'm dreadfully sorry, but I gotta say though, that cover is gorgeous. I mean, Mary Jane is rocking the whole 30-year-old teenager look. Am I right? Yeah, of course I'm right. 
Um, it's passable. It's a, it's your it's an average Spider-Man story. And uh, I think Marvel was just focusing. Hey, Mary Jane's back. Hey, whoopie doo. Yep. Now what? <laughs> that's pretty much it. Okay, MJ's back. Now what? It's, that's that's basically it. I mean, Mark Wade and Mario Alberti, great team up for a book on one of Marvel's flagship characters. But all in all, it's just average. It's just average at best. It's 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 good, but it's still just it's it's just there. It's just there. It doesn't hold a candle to American Sun or Amazing 600. Finally, best book of the week by far, Luke Cage Noir number one. Oh hell yes! And I, to think I almost passed this book up because Luke Cage has never been one of my personal favorite Marvel characters. But damn, this was a good book. Mike Benson, Adam Glass, along with um, Sean Martin, bro, do an, a, a fantastic job. I was pleasantly surprised by how awesome this book was, and I'm just gonna. In this review real quick by saying the last page hit me in the gut is just great this is probably my highest recommendation of the week very small week for comic books too by the way all right now that we got the comic book reviews out of the way I want to give uh, a special shout out to my buddy uh, Ken Jackson from uh, Arkham Comics he wanted me to give him a plug on my blog so I'm gonna do that here's a picture of him uh, you think he might be a Green Lantern fan everybody you think I don't know. I think he might be a Green Lantern fan, although I really can't say that I can prove it. Um, but he wanted me to give give out these uh, these thoughts. He gave me a list of thoughts to express here on this blog. His thoughts about Blackest Night. And uh, listen to some of these and tell me what you think. Here we go. Bruce Wayne will return and take control of the Black Lanterns. He says, think about it. Bruce is the ultimate tactician. He has the strength, brains, and willpower to take it from Black Hand. Just because Black Hand's got his skull doesn't mean he ain't coming back. So think about that. Barry Allen will sacrifice himself yet again to save mankind. He says, I'll get more into this later. More heroes will die. No shit, we knew that already. Just follow me here. Black is the opposite of white. Since black is a combination of colors, a separation will bring white. Black is representing death. The opposite of death is life or reborn. Barry Allen can make the ultimate sacrifice once again and be reborn as the leader of the White Lanterns to bring some of the heroes that have died in the past or will die during this storyline back to life. Come on, heroes and villains die and come back all the time in comics. A possible story title slash theme would be In Brightest Day or simply Brightest Day. This storyline would be What If the Ultimate Good Side Won? It would revolve around good wanting to rid evil from existence. Think about that. We got Blackest Night, a bunch of zombies, a bunch of dead characters going around trying to kill everybody. Think about what would happen if we had Brightest Day, a storyline where a bunch of reborn characters are going around trying to save everybody. You know, who knows what kind of conflict we would get in a story like that. I think DC, DC should do a Brightest Day story in the future. And if they choose to do it, I recommend they get Jeff Johns on the writing. Because he's writing everything good associated with Green Lantern right now. So, I welcome the viewers. Post a comment. Let me know what you think about possibilities for a Brightest Day storyline. And let me know what you thought about my comic book reviews this week. Well, that's all I got for this week, everybody. So, until next time. I'll see you later.